2016 celebrates 60 years of the Army Reserve in Europe. However, the organization's deep-rooted history stretches back to World War II, where Army Reserve soldiers fought in the European theater. During the course of the war, more than 200,000 Army Reserve soldiers would serve. When World War II ended, most soldiers went home to resume their lives. But World War II had initiated the beginning of a new era in national security, with missions that would pave the way for the modern Army Reserve and the major role it plays today. Citizen soldiers keeping themselves trained and ready to become part of the Army of the United States should it become necessary. Here indeed is a vital part of the big picture, the reserve team. In 1948, the Army Reserve came to be as we now know it. Army Reserve units were authorized 24 inactive duty training days a year and up to 17 days of annual training. For United States Army Reserve soldiers that stayed in Europe after the end of World War II, the Department of the Army authorized the training of reservists in the European theater under a training program established by the European Command Office of Plans, Operations and Training, the forerunner to United States Army Europe. By the end of the Korean War in 1952, the Army had found it more effective to mobilize and deploy fully trained and manned Army Reserve units as opposed to individual soldiers. This set the precedent for the readiness of Army Reserve organizations in future call-ups. By 1954, there were about 700 Army Reserve officers and 150 enlisted reservists in the Army European Command, including about 150 who lived outside of Germany and France. By summer 1956, it had become obvious that the existing system, geared as it was to the requirements of an assorted group of reservists, had not been effective. The solution was the establishment of an organized Army Reserve unit structure in the U.S. Army Reserve school system in December of 1956. There were four units in Munich, Paris, Madrid, and a school detachment in Frankfurt. Eleven satellite schools were organized to cover training for military intelligence, infantry, civil affairs, armor, engineers, artillery, and adjutant general specialties. From the beginning, the USAR schools provided professional development training for both reserve and active component soldiers. The schools provided non-resident officer advance courses, command and general staff college, and enlisted training such as military occupational specialty education and NCO professional development courses. Some phases were given as weekend or evening classes, other phases were given as two-week sessions. Throughout the entire Cold War period, the Army Reserve existed as a strategic reserve and the active Army handled most military operations without the reserve components. In 1965, the schools were under command and control of the U.S. Army Military District Europe Heidelberg, which was redesignated Headquarters United States Army Reserve Affairs Europe. Also, by 1965, a close analysis of the Army Reserve soldiers' records revealed that a very significant number of them possessed exceptional skills, abilities, and experience. This included capabilities in languages, geographical knowledge, and a record of establishing effective working relationships with foreign nationals. For this reason, the force structure began to change so that USAIR could take advantage of these capabilities in such fields as intelligence, military government and civil affairs, psychological warfare, and allied fields. By the end of the Vietnam War in 1975, Congress had reduced the Army end strength from 1.5 million to 785,000 active duty soldiers. The total force policy from that period placed an increased reliance on reserve component units for rapid deployment to military operations. By 1982, new Army Reserve units were being created to dovetail or fill in needs of the active Army. This process was the guide behind the creation of the 7th Army Reserve Command. The new 7th ARCOM headquarters was formed from United States Army Reserve Europe in the cadre of the 3747th United States Army Reserve School. The 7th ARCOM's first headquarters was at McGraw Cassern in Munich. In 1989, the 7th ARCOM became a General Officer Command. The commander at that time, Colonel Richard Durgens, became the United States Army in Europe's first homegrown reserve general officer. That same year, the structure of the 7th ARCOM continued to grow and change with the Army development of reserve component specific rear operations centers and command posts. At one point, the 7th ARCOM had 10 such units, the largest in any command. As a result, the 7th ARCOM became the Army's major repository of rear operations doctrine expertise. The ARCOM moved to a number of facilities before settling in at Tompkins Barracks in Schwetzingen. On August 2nd, 1990, more than 100,000 of Saddam Hussein's soldiers invaded Kuwait. At my direction, 
elements of the 82nd Airborne Division, as well as key units of the United States Air Force, are arriving today to take up defensive positions in Saudi Arabia. About 35,000 Army Reserve soldiers deployed to Southwest Asia as part of operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Five 7th ARCOM Rear Operations Centers mobilized and deployed roughly 20% of the ARCOM's units as part of the effort. After Desert Storm, as United States Army Europe shifted away from its Cold War structure, the 7th ARCOM also decreased its number of rear operations units and progressively added combat service support units. After the Berlin Wall fell until the former Warsaw Pact countries joined NATO, NATO's Partnership for Peace program was designed to train the Eastern Europeans on NATO structure and doctrine. The 7th ARCOM ran dozens of four-person teams all over Europe in support of this effort. As significant as that contribution may have been, it was dwarfed by the level of commitment made for Operations Joint Endeavor and Joint Guard. When United States and NATO troops deployed to the former Yugoslavia in late 1995 to enforce the Dayton Peace Accord, 11 7th ARCOM units mobilized on December 11th under a Presidential Selective Reserve call-up to support United States Army Europe's Forward and Task Force Eagle in the peacekeeping mission. The 7th ARCOM's most significant contribution to Balkan operations was the establishment and operation of the United States Army Europe Mobilization Support Center. Developed from Gulf War lessons learned, it intended to improve on the challenges of force tracking, managing the flow of reserve units and individual reservists, and fixing the reserve's issues in personnel and finance. In the years after the September 11, 2001 attacks, the 7th ARCOM mobilized and deployed 19 of its 23 units and more than 450 personnel in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. At this deployment's peak, the ARCOM had personnel serving in 13 different countries throughout Europe and the Middle East. As a result of its outstanding performance during this critical mobilization, the 7th ARCOM was awarded the Army Chief of Staff Deployment Excellence Award in the Supporting Unit category. The award recognized the 7th ARCOM's efforts at mobilizing all of its own units, but in an unusual twist, others as well. Simultaneously, the 7th ARCOM mobilized units based in the continental United States, including the 3rd Corps Support Command and a few smaller but still critical units. In 2006, 7th ARCOM began its transformation planning. United States Army Europe directed the command to focus their theater support on consequence management and civil affairs. In 2008, the 7th ARCOM leadership team of Brigadier General John Miller and Command Sergeant Major David Stating led Operation Assured Delivery, which provided humanitarian assistance to the Republic of Georgia following the conflict between Georgia and Russia. More than 1,250 short tons of supplies were delivered by air and sea. The 7th ARCOM headquarters element moved to Kaiserslautern in the summer of 2008 and was reflagged as the 7th Civil Support Command. The 7th CSC was placed under command and control of the 21st Theater Sustainment Command, and the Commanding General became dual-hatted as the 7th CG and the Deputy Commanding General for the 21st TSC. The 7th CSC provided the 21st TSC and United States Army Europe with trained and ready units while preparing for a no-notice disaster response mission. In 2012, the 7th Civil Support Command led the NATO response to a severe blizzard in Montenegro. The 40 Soldier Task Force included active duty and reserve elements. Together, they provided rescue services and delivered critical supplies. In late 2014, a team of 7th MSC and 21st TSC soldiers deployed to Dakar, Senegal, helping in the fight against the Ebola virus during Operation United Assistance. The following year, 2015, on October 1st, the 7th Civil Support Command was redesignated the 7th Mission Support Command. This brought the unit in line with other Army Reserve organizations outside the continental United States, including the 1st MSC in Puerto Rico and the 9th MSC in Hawaii. The command had nearly 1,000 soldiers assigned to 22 reserve units when it was redesignated, stationed throughout Germany and Vicenza, Italy. Missions include providing a corps of personnel to establish a Joint Task Force headquarters, support for United States Army Reserve Title X functions to assign forces and other Army Reserve assets in theater, civil affairs, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear capabilities, medical support, transportation coordination, human resources, and professional military education. The 7th MSC continues to support activities across Europe and Africa, including multiple iterations of NATO's Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response Coordination Center annual exercise, the ongoing Operation Atlantic Resolve rotations, 
various MedReady events across Africa, and other exercises across the Army Europe footprint. Into the future, the Army has approved plans to add a history detachment, a regional support group headquarters, more movement control teams, and a combat sustainment support battalion, bringing the total number of soldiers in the 7th Mission Support Command to more than 1,300. The 7th MSC will continue to support our NATO allies as part of United States Army Europe's Strong Europe Assure and Deter framework. The exceptional skills, abilities, and experience of the Army Reserve soldiers in the 7th Mission Support Command will continue to ensure that it remains a valued asset to the Army Reserve, the 21st TSC, United States Army Europe, and the total force.